Hey, this is Avi Gutman with another Ask Me Anything event brought to you by QuantReasoning.com. I invite you to join me live next time. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can attend for free by starting your free trial at QuantReasoning.com. There is very little, very little that is worth memorizing for the GMAT, for quant. Uh, in fact, I thought about doing a, a YouTube video just on that, just the other day. Um, very little worth memorizing. Now, there's a lot of stuff that you need to know that's not worth memorizing. What do I mean by that? If you need to memorize from a flashcard, for example, that the average of an evenly spaced set can be calculated by taking the average of the endpoints. If that's something you need to memorize from a flashcard, then it's not going to be useful to you in the test because you don't understand the reasoning behind why that is true. You're just memorizing it from a flashcard. So most of the stuff that you need to know for quant is that kind of stuff where if you're if you're memorizing it it's useless because because you don't really understand it and if you do really understand it like if you understand why it is that that's true then you don't need to memorize it because you get it you understand it and there's very little stuff that's actually worth memorizing without necessarily understanding reasoning behind it and i'll just throw out a few examples real quick here so if we say, you know, uh, root 2 is approximately 1.4, root 3 is approximately 1.7, uh, the Pythagorean triplets, 3, 4, 5, uh, 8, 15, 17, all right, 7, 24, 25, that's stuff that's worth memorizing. For the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratio is uh, 1, root 3, 2. For the 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's uh, 1, 1, root 2. That's stuff worth memorizing. The side of a triangle has to be shorter than the sum of the other two and longer than the difference of the other two. That's something worth memorizing. And so a lot of stuff in geometry, as you can see here. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. 2 pi r and pi r squared, of course, worth memorizing. But... Other than that, I mean, what else is worth memorizing? I guess the exponents, right? 2 squared all the way to 2 to the power of 10. Like, memorize those. Uh, 3 squared all the way to 3 to the power of 5. 4 squared, 4 cubed. 5 squared, 5 cubed. And so on. So a bunch of exponents like that. Uh, anything else I can think of that's worth memorizing? Uh, 1 ninth is 11.111%. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like I think on the slide right now, we have 90, at least 90 percent of the stuff that I would consider worth memorizing for the for this test. And anything outside of that, you shouldn't be memorizing. You should be thinking about why it's true. And that's what my book attempts to do: is to go into the reasoning behind the rules. And the same goes for the formula for compound interest. I know that a lot of people memorize that formula for the GMAT. Look, you'll need that formula when you get to business school, but you don't need it for the GMAT. And I was a Foundations of Finance TA in, in my MBA program at NYU, so I know that formula very well as well. I have never used it on the GMAT. And yet I see all these GMAT books out there uh, asking students to memorize the compound interest formula. You will need to have it memorized later when you get to business school, but not now, not for the GMAT. Who needs that excess anxiety and, uh, you know, one more thing to memorize in, on your flashcards? Uh, so, you know, when I see people coming to the test center with their flashcards and they're kind of going over them uh, in the minutes before they get called into the computer room, I just think to myself, man, the, the test anxiety that this person is about to experience is, is uh, absolutely astronomical. You know, going over your flashcards the minutes before the test, it's, it's not that kind of test. It reminds me of a, a classmate of mine in the undergrad. Uh, we, we, had a, we had a course on options in finance, options. And uh, the professor was just talk, talking, 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 and mentioned in passing that obviously you want to buy low and sell high. 
And he kept on talking and, and she raised her hand, this classmate of mine, and she asked, could you repeat that thing that you just said? And he's like, which thing? <laughs> she's like, something about buying and selling. And he's like, oh, buy, buy low, sell high. And she's like, you know, taking a note furiously on her, on her paper to, to prepare flashcards for the test. And that's not the, the way to succeed on, on the GMAT, right? Because it's a test of reasoning. It's not a test of memorizing a bunch of formulas. So if you attended an online class that uh, suggested that you memorize a bunch of stuff, then uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rely too heavily on that class because it's, it's just not, it's not the way to succeed on this test. Uh, and, and by the way, to be fair to, to, be fair to that class, it, it should increase people's GMAT score. It should, just not by very much. And it's also a lot less enjoyable no to study for the test that way, in my opinion. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.